those what I deserve to live in. And now, and that fallen angel have to live in abject poverty. <sighs> She married a man who had a rather low paying position in the huge company, you see? And her wardrobe. It was so plain and simple, mainly because on her husband's salary, she could only afford to shop in second hand stores. Oh, look at me. I'm not plain. I have charm and I have witch. I'm just as goofy as those ladies of the aristocracy in their mansion. Oh my lord, why couldn't you have made me wealthy? If I were rich, I would show those fine ladies who the wealthy men invite to their villas on the Mediterranean. And she became a daydreamer. She always seemed to be thinking about the luxurious room, hung with orient to tapestry, illuminated by long, tall bronze candelabras. And servers, she imagined footmen in bridges who would fall asleep in their overstuffed armchairs. She always dreams of reception hall, hung with ants and silk and little kittens. Overflowing with pricing, curiosity from exotic places and coquettish, between reception rooms just for chatting intimately with friends and she imagined successful and elegant people coming, going, and stopping to greet her. <sighs> but reality always interrupted her dreams. Oh, I'm home, darling. Have a sit. Oh, wonderful, wonderful soup. I never tire of it. There is nothing better than a humble, good soup. I'm so sorry, it's so thin, right? No, it's wonderful to me. So I have to spread our money so far. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, dear. I have learned to be satisfied with my condition, you know, a person who is always satisfied with what they have is always wealthy. Oh my god, what a relief. Do you know what I heard? What? She even stopped going to see Madame Frostier, her former classmate, just because her wealthy depresses her more. No? Do you really think that the reason? Mm, yes, I'm quite certain. I have a wonderful surprise for you, my dear. Really? Ta da! What's this? Hey, come on, open it. The chief executive officer requests the honor of Monsieur and the Mademoiselle company in the Grand Bon Room of the Excelsior Hotel on Monday evening, October 30th for our annual executive ball. Isn't that wonderful? What do you mean? What can I do with that? Why, why, my dear, I thought you'd be so happy. We never get the chance to go to things like this. This is such a fabulous opportunity. You know, all my co-workers would kill to get one, and I had awful trouble getting this invitation. These invitations are rarely given to anyone who is not in the upper management. All the VIPs will be there. I did this for you. Excuse me? Exactly. What do you think I could wear to that glamorous occasion? Mm, of course, that gown, the gown you wear to the theater with me. That one is really quite suitable. <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you crying? I will be humiliated on that own gout. Don't you understand? It's very 
worn and torn and out of fashion. Don't you understand? And I have nothing suitable for that glamorous occasion. So I can not certainly go to that mall. So you had better give this invitation to other people who's in the office, whose, whose wife is better equipped than I am for that occasion. There must be a way I want so much for you to have this. Um, how much do you think a suitable gown would cost? You know, something you could wear on other occasions, something simple but uh, you know, also very elegant, of course. Actually, I don't know. I'm not. Sh I'm not too sure. It's maybe four hundred francs is okay. Four hundred francs. Um, I'll tell you what. I've been uh, saving up a small fund to buy myself a gun. A gun? You know, so that I could go hunting with my boss next summer. It might help me to get promoted, and uh, you know, I need to get a break from my work sometimes. Uh, now I have uh, exactly 400 francs, but uh, you could take it for a gown. You will be absolutely beautiful and impress everyone. I'm sure of that. Isn't that sweet? Do you have a hanky? Look at you. You make any dress come to life. How ravishing you look. But I'll be disgraced. Disgraced? What could you possibly mean? You will be the most beautiful woman in the ballroom. I'll look absolutely poverty stricken. Poverty stricken? For 400 francs and now you look poverty stricken? You just don't understand. It's so annoying. I do not have a single piece of jewelry to wear with my gowns. Everyone will think that it's because we are poor. I could almost rather not go at all. Oh, that's cool. I could almost rather not go at all. Oh, well, you, you, oh, you can wear flowers instead. You could get a lot of roses around our outhouse. Uh, that's even worse than wearing no ornament at all. Everyone will think that we are trying to hide our poverty. She does have a point. Oh, listen to you. I was several appointed fashion expert. But there is one thing. One possibility that you have forgotten. What's that? Your old classmate, Madame Jane Forestier, she's really well off. I'm sure that she will lend you some of her jewelry. You two used to be so close. I'm almost certain she will help you. <laughs> of course. Why don't you think about it before? Wow, I like this place. It's cool. <laughs> Don't touch though. We're supposed to be invisible, remember? I'm certain there's something here would be perfect for you, my dear. Oh, that one seems quite appropriate. Uh, actually, I expect something more... Impressive, you mean? Yes. You may look at this, but I'm afraid that these things are only... Oh my god, that could be perfect! Yes, it could be perfect. It could be asking too much, isn't it? Um, nonsense. I'd be delighted to see you wear it, my dear. Please take it. Really? Oh my god, I don't know what to say, my dear. Thank you very much.
Oh, Monsieur Hey, Jacques, at this in Catherine, send them all no one me. What do we mean? Very disappointing. You never changed, my friend. What you have to remember is that as she gets older, so do the wives of some contemporaries. Well, if there are no women worth looking at, I might as well drink myself into a stupor. That is the only way I'm going to get through this evening. You may have spoken too soon. Look who is just walking. What? That little club lodger? He works in my department. Boring little man, no class, no reading. How can he be a... Uh, She's stunning. Beautiful. A variable Venus. Who could have thought that Lozo could have such a delightfully attractive? Hey, where are you going? Well, what do you think, my dear? Oh, hey, hey. it's so wonderful. Look at all the people here, here. all the women. They're so elegant, so sophisticated. Madame, uh, may I have the pleasure of the next dance? With me? Uh, with your husband's permission, of course. Uh, Monsieur, will you allow me the honor of dancing with the most beautiful woman in the room? Why, certainly. You go ahead, Matilda, and enjoy yourself. You know I'm not really one for dancing. Look at that trap. Shape up and straighten. Right tension. And left down to make a floor. And I spent what? 10,000 friends on this girl. And how the best game make it to look my face. I'm spotting this fancy. I must say, you are the most attractive young lady I have seen in many a day. All those colorings who stroll through the tutories are fading blossom compared to you. You honor me. Oh, but you are, madame. You honor me. It's not often we meet a lady of your rare beauty. You brighten up the whole world. You are a politician. You flatter me. Good tram like that. I can see you weaving in the Elysee's palace one day. Not at all, madam. But the pleasure of being chosen to govern France could be nothing to the pleasure of being allowed to accompany you in the next dance. Oh boy! Yes! Just you know, I'm most lost on the dance floor. What the? Who is this? Don't you know? I'm the queen of Ha! Huh. Second honor to meet your highness. But, uh... You know, many times I look at myself in the mirror and ask, Mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is this lady? The fairies of all. And it's what it's like. You, my queen, are the fairies of all. That is so true. My lost lips and rosy cheeks have hunger for your tusks. Kiss me. Stand with me at the person, by the way. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I've been meaning to dance with someone else. So what? Ditch her and dance with me. Wait, it is even her? Because I know that no women can ever resist my beauty. My beauty is intoxicated. Are you gay? Ooh, I like someone in this gone banana.
Madame Matilda was absolutely smashing. She was much prettier than the other women. Elegant, graceful, and wild with joy. Everyone noticed her, and her husband, boss, wanted to have every dance with her. And not that he didn't have a lot of competition with the other executives. And as soon as he fell asleep, with other three husbands, whose wives were having such a great time, they sneaked out to the ante room and fell asleep on the sofa. I can hear the music. Here they come. You were indeed lovely tonight. Apparently not lovely enough to keep you awake. You were having such a good time, I didn't want to interfere. <laughs> Here, take one final look in the mirror before you disrobe. I've given you a night to remember. Oh, oh my god. What? Uh, What's the matter with oh no. you? Oh my god. What? That's, what is it? This can be true. I have got Madame First Year necklace. It can't be. That's impossible. No, I don't know. Where is it? Um, please, God, help us. Please. Why is it? Ah, uh, uh, it must be around here somewhere. <laughs> Necklaces don't just evaporate. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Where is are you sure that you had it on when you left the ball? Perhaps it fell off when you were dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, someone must have found it and it will be returned safely. No, I'm certain. I'm certain that, that I have it on because I I was reaching. I remember reaching up and touching it after I put putting on my coat. Oh, and the streets were so quiet, and we walked along with the cold, so that surely we must have heard it fall. It must be in that wretched cap. Really? You're, you're right. Uh, do you remember the number of the cap? Half of the night caps operate without number. I certainly didn't see one, did you? Of course not. Could I have asked you if I know? Uh, okay. I will go back the entire route to see if I can find it. Please, God help us. Darling, wake up. Wakey, wakey. I returned. Oh my god. Thank god. Did you find it? I'm afraid I didn't. I retraced the entire route on foot and found nothing. I went to the police and the cab companies, but there wasn't even the faintest glimmer of hope. The police said that it was an unlicensed cap. The chances of recovering the necklace were pitifully low. I even went to the newspaper office and placed ads posting rewards. But uh, you know, why would the driver return the necklace for a modest reward when he could get so much more if he sells it on the black market? I can bear it. I just can bear it. You must hold yourself together until we can find an answer. We need more time. Here is what you do. Now you, you, listen, listen. 
you write a letter to your friend, telling her that you have broken the clasp of her necklace and you are having it fixed by a jeweler. That will give us the time we need. So, what good will the time do us if the driver is dishonest? And more surely he is. We must assume the worst. We must assume that it will never be returned. In that case, we will have no choice but to replace it. We'll have to find another exactly like it. to pay off the loan they took out to purchase a replacement necklace for Madame Forestier. Yes, it's amazing that Madame Forestier never seemed to notice the difference. Are you kidding? Only an expert in diamond would be able to tell that the replacement necklace were really the same with the original. And the price the Rosel have taken in 10 years of the heavy to cover the cost of the equipment. Look at that, Monsieur Lucille. Even used the small inheritance left by his father, which would be the security late in later years. He works day and night, putting in overtime at the office, and he even takes extra work from clients. The situation is really terrible. Their apartment is even shabbier, and their clothes are practically falling over them. They have all displayed such heroism in order to make good on the necklace. And Madame Forestier doesn't even know what happened. Their previous life, they are right and serious and carefree to what they have now. for you and we have to spend the last 10 years paying off for the debt but in the, the this very day we have made the last payment 10 years yeah 10 years surely it couldn't have taken that long to pay for the necklace the diamond that we bought was the first ray of the, the highest quality you know the jewels are the most exquisite available Diamond? You purchased diamond? Yeah. You know, the jeweler said to us that there's the fires diamond that we can buy. It costs us about 50,000 francs. If you want to check the, the receipt, I can give you to verify the price. Oh my poor dear Matilda, you purchased diamond to replace my necklace? 
when in fact it's just fake diamond, mere glass. The replacement should have cost you no more than 500 francs. Really? One, two, three, go. 